Today we now continue with our tutorial 7 or step 7 of our time leap Spring Boot application. And before I continue this step, I would like to just mention something about the MySQL database we created. Sometimes, based on the location where you stay, you may have error when you try to run this application that uh, have MySQL configuration. So this error might be a time zone related error. So to solve that problem, just copy this. Control V. So this line here, uh, let me see. So this very line that I just pasted will actually replace the data source. So we can see that the data source ended somewhere here. We can see you can see that additional things are attached like Unicode and time zone shifts. So in case you have error with this particular uh, data source URL, then, then you can use this one. So that's how to handle or to figure that out. So let's now create the model. What is the model? The model is simply the entity. It represents a table. Yeah. So it's a class that we are going to be working with, and that will be student. Remember, this application keeps a record of students. So where do you create the model? You need to create the model in the models folder, in the models package, I mean. So let's see. So sometimes, okay, so let's go to right click on this place and just choose new, choose new class. A model for sure is a Java class. So I'm going to call it student. So this, the name of the model should be the name, the real name of the object that you want to store. So I want to create it in the models folder. So to the models package, to create a models package where you put this model. At the end of this, just say dot models. So it creates a package called models. So I'm going to say finish and we have the student models, uh, student class created. So we have a number of uh, variables. Again, I don't want to copy and paste. I want to type this out myself. So I say private integer ID, private, uh, this time string name, private uh, string, Department private uh, this time yeah string updated by and finally private uh, private updated from that is uh, this time we are talking about dates this time if I'm not mistaken updated on. So we've done this. Let me let's just verify to see. All right. So private date, private string. Oh, so this actually should be uh, dates, not not just. Hmm, what happened? All right. So let's let's continue from here. So Control Shift O on your keyboard to add the namespace for dates. Date time. Save. Okay, so at this point we can have so we have import dates uh, java.util. So we have some things annotations we need to add. The first one is in this class we are going to make it an entity by adding an the add entity annotation. The primary key has to be uh, an ID key. And we add an ID annotation here. And finally, the date time annotation, we need to specify the date time format or the date time pattern. So use the at date time pattern, at date time format, at date time format. And the pattern is going to be YYYYMMDD. Right, so this is the, the pattern we want to use for the date. So again, this should be date, not string. So this is actually an error, the string here. So at this point, I'm going to press Control Shift O on my keyboard, and I'm going to say next. All right, so I think everything is fine. Everything is fine at this point. So I'm going to save everything. Generate the constructors, getters and setters and to string, and to, to string method. So I'm going to just right click here and say source. 
and say generate constructor. I want to generate the constructor using fields. I'm going to say generate. So it generates the constructor for me. I want to also generate the getters and setters. So I'm going to say source and I'm going to say generate getters and setters. Select everything and say generate. And finally, I want to generate the to string method. So I'm going to say source, generate to string. Okay. So there is some dependency called Lombok. So this Lombok prevents you from having to generate all of this. So it kind of gives you an annotation to add to your entity and then it automatically generates this without adding them uh, to, your, to your model. So it makes it your model kind of neat. But since this is a beginner tutorial, I want you to understand what is happening behind the hood. Again, there is something that you need to always do. Always try to have an empty constructor. So let's add an empty constructor. So just as what the name is, a constructor that is empty. So these are empty constructor we've created it. That is fine. So at this point, we have completed tutorial seven. We have a working model now that we've created. So I'm going to save everything. I'm going to thank you for viewing and we'll see in the next class, which will be to write and test an initialization database query.